Hi, my name is Santino Martin. I'm from the Philippines and I'm playing the role of David, a 15-year-old boy who's gay and um, who's very into social media. I'm Osilito Altarejos. I'm the director of the film, Unfriend. Yeah, so, well, you already had some practice. Did you also go to any screenings so far? The, the, the premiere. The premiere? Last the opening night. film. Mm -hmm. How was it? How was it's interesting. It's entertaining. The Budapest, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. Okay. And how did the audience react? They, they loved it. I, uh, one I talked to said that it's uh, just uh, a nice film to open mm -hmm. because it's kind of light, not really heavy, to, to make people get into the groove. You know, so mm -hmm. It's nice. I love it. Though. I love Wes Anderson. So. Oh, I thought you were talking about your movie. I was asking ah, you if you've been to ah, your screenings. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last <laughs> night, last night. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. No, that's fine, that's okay. fine. Um. So, last night was our uh, world premiere. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. A lot of people stayed for the Q&A. Mm -hmm. So, uh, around 80% of those who watched stayed for the Q&A. And it was nice. Hmm, cool. And so you had a positive feedback, I guess? So far, yes. So far, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was also my first time to see it in a big, big screen because it hasn't it hasn't been shown in the Philippines yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course I, got, I, I, I I watched it when I did the lock, the picture, and the sound loud. So but it was mm -hmm. uh, kind of small. Things. Uh, what are you expecting when it's going to be screened in the Philippines? Do you do you also expect a positive feedback, or do you think it's going to be controversial? It's kind of, it will spark some debate. debates mm -hmm. and conversations, hopefully. But uh, it's a very challenging film to watch. Mm -hmm. The choices, the choices that I that I made as a filmmaker, are, are very uh, uh, challenging. The, the the shots, the sound, and the storytelling is very challenging. So, but I'm prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And how was it for you when you were shooting the movie? If it is a controversial thing, if people debate about it, you also have the feeling that people talk with you about it, that you took this role and that you were in the movie? Actually, uh, this film was very silent when it comes to the preparation. Yeah. It was very, it was very, uh, we're very um, um, silent when it comes to the process. Nobody talked about Nobody it. Talked and, about then, it. And, then, and then, so they're surprised that a Filipino film, which they haven't, Heard of okay. is going to be Berlinale. So it's like, wow, there's a, a film called Unfriend. So mm -hmm. it's nice. So we hope to have that uh, conversation or so uh, noise when it's shown two weeks from now. Okay, in two weeks. Yeah. And how is the overall situation for homosexuals in the Philippines? Is it a thing that is openly discussed? Is it in the media or is it very silent as well? As, as you always say, uh, it's a, it's a, we're there, but we're not there. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, we stop acknowledging We things. know things, but we're not acknowledging it. Yeah, no. we know things, but we are, we're not acknowledging it. We're like refused to acknowledge it. Like, for example, there, is just, there are just industries where in, we are completely um, accepted and mm -hmm. uh, work jobs are available. But for example, uh, a Filipino politician cannot come out openly and mm -hmm. win a seat. And then, but people talk about it. And this person's gay, mm -hmm. and even in the film industry, there's this uh, thing about people not coming out. I believe that no one who's popular enough has come out. You know? mm -hmm. So that's how it is in the Philippines. Uh, even in, in families, we know, but we don't talk about it. Okay. And that's, I think it summarizes the, the entire um, the situation. The culture. The culture. Which I find also quite interesting because I mean those um, beauty contests with with men who dress up as as women and so forth and so far are quite popular, aren't they? And that is something very visible, isn't it? It is visible, and they expect gay men to be like that. Okay. That's the thing. If you're not like that, then you're. That's where the the the. What is the ambiguity comes in? Mm -hmm. Like you won't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So some people would rather not talk about themselves being gay or something. Mm -hmm. Was that one of the reasons why you chose to have two boys who are not like that in the movie? I mean, it, it is two young it guys. Always, it has always been my conscious effort. I've done other queer films and mm -hmm. my portrayals of, of gay men are, are always like that. For, for us to see that we are here. You know, we don't have to, and there's nothing wrong with people who dress up or what, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. 
It's just that I want to see other images of, of, of homosexual men in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And you also have the topic of suicide in the movie. Is that something that is a big issue among gay people in the Philippines? Not, not being uh, not for gay people, but for the youth, of the generation. Okay. You know, the if younger you search, generation. The younger generation. You know, if you search on YouTube, there are a lot of suicidal victims. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you will see that there are like hundreds. You mean in the Philippines? No, I mean overall. Overall, overall. Yes. But, but uh, at the same time, you know, there was a there was a time in the Philippines where in, in, a, in a week's time there were three uh, consecutive suicides that happened, mm -hmm. and these are young ones for different reasons: economic reasons, love, and among other things. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of um, interesting, and at the same time, I want to to spark conversation about mental health of the young ones. Mm. You know. In the Philippines, it's taboo to go to a psychiatrist. And uh, it's not good to say, uh, I go to a, a therapist and I'm, for example, uh, a bipolar or uh, I'm, I'm going through depression. You can't just say that because the conclusion is you're crazy. Mm. But and then I want to change that. I myself went through it a year or two ago, and up to now, I, I see my sh shrink, and I'm willing to talk about it, that we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. As It should be as ordinary as going to your dentist. See, I mean, that's what I want to say, that it's, it's ordinary. Mm -hmm. If there's something wrong with you, then we can do something about it and change it. Don't just pray or, or talk to a friend, you know. Um, pop psychology, sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it, it's overrated, so sometimes we need uh, professional help in certain aspects of our life. So it was also a very personal movie then, it I guess. It is, it is. My, my films are always personal films. Mm -hmm. I always make personal and realistic films. Mm -hmm. uh, I always do that. And well, you were talking about already, or you were already talking about the taboo not to talk about homosexuality in the family and so forth, and to me it seemed that, that the grandmother actually knows that the boy is gay. But she's never ever talking about it, she's just ignoring it. Yeah, that's the thing, that's the thing. You know, uh, grandmothers and families are very doting on their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And they accept them, but don't talk about it. Even parents won't talk about it openly, like, oh, are you gay or something? And there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with it. My partner, who's been with me for five years, uh, is lucky to have had a father who said to him when he came out that, okay, it's nice, just don't, just be safe, mm -hmm. do protection. But, but uh, it's a very rare occurrence in the Philippines. We have this thing, uh, denial thing in the family. Mm -hmm. And how is the role of religion in the Philippines? I mean, it's a very Catholic country. It is. So you also see that the people in the movie go to church and they pray, the grandmother is very religious. Yeah. Um, how does that come in there? I mean, does that also trigger this taboo not to talk about it? Definitely. Sometimes, you know, in the Philippines, um, when their parents are not absent, you know, working abroad or, or not at home, sometimes in the culture, we rely on, on the church to teach the kids the values, moral lessons, you know, being a good citizen or being um, studying the Bible, following all the, you know, the, the prophets' teachings and things like that. So we rely too much on the church. We don't rely on the core values of having a, you know, a complete family. You know, family teaching kids what to do and what not, what not to do, what to see and what not to see. It's, it's very ironic. It is a Catholic country. People are religious, but at the same time, we, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, controversial issues also in the church, mm -hmm. like there also, well, like during the last administration, the church officials got, good, got, got cars from the government, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so that's it, I mean, it's a very religious country, and yet, it's political. It, it, it's, we, we, we refuse to adhere to, to to, to the morality, so to speak, that the, ch that the church spouses, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I myself don't have one. I don't believe in anything. I, I don't go to the church. I don't believe in anything for that matter. Because I feel that if an establishment or anyone for that matter cannot accept me for who I am, for what I am, I will not be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not be a part of it. And I'm fine. I want to show people that I'm fine. Mm -hmm. 
so just, just to make clear, it means there is also no, no separation between state and religion in the Philippines? There should be. There should be. It is in the Constitution. Is in the there Constitution. is a separation. But you see, you see these images in, 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 in government offices, mm. like an image of um, Mama Mary or Christ, you know? And then they, they always have these uh, masses in, in, in offices. So it, it's, the, the line is very blurred. It, yeah. It's not clear. It's not clear. And it's, you know, politicians are so, they always invoke the name of God. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, that these people who go to church are so corrupt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, so it's a lot I, of hypocrisy, I, uh, isn't it? Definitely. There's so much hypocrisy in the society. In, 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 I don't know if I should be talking about this, but I am talking about it. <laughs> there is. And, I hate that. I mean, you know, church somehow has a role in the society, you know? Yeah. But for as long as... To ins just to inspire. But and not for some to... people it works. Mm -hmm. For some people it works. I mean, it's supposed to be a good thing mm -hmm. to have a concept of God or religion. But, but, but when you're not adhering to the good things of a certain establishment, then what is that for? Mm. So you're also challenging that with your yeah, movie? Yeah, definitely. Because I'm, I openly say I don't believe in anything, and for for a country like that, it, it's kind of. I mean, my friends say, oh, "Okay," mm -hmm. you know, but they'd rather not talk to you about it. Also, once again, once again, <laughs> because they're so they're, they're so afraid of uh, saying we don't believe in that. They're so afraid of that. Mm. But at the same time, I always tell them, you know what? We're a very prayerful country. We're a very religious country, but we're still poor. Mm. If it if your God will make it happen for all of us, then we should have a better life. But we don't have. Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> yes, but talking about poor country, well, I, in the movie, I didn't have the feeling that it really is a poor country. I mean, I guess there is a lot of difference between cities and the countryside, maybe, because the like the atmosphere we, we see is people with mobile phones, with internet, and so forth. It, it seems like. But mo mobile phones are very cheap in the Philippines. Okay. And getting um, connection, internet connection connections or is very easy. Credit. It's very easy. It's very cheap. Yeah. Students, poor students, skip lunch to have credits to buy credits for their phones for the for the internet. So that's how it is. And I mean that is also a big thing in the movie: internet, Facebook, mobile yeah. phones, and so okay. forth. And um, I mean, how did that change the society then? And how maybe did it also change the gay society? Because I had the feeling that it was very important for the young people in the movie. One, I would like, well, as I said last night, um, the, the, this entire social media thing have changed the way we live our lives. We have, it has, uh, this, this phenomenon, if, if I may call it, have, have made all of us performers and have made all of us viewers and exhibitionists at the same time. So, and of course, it's not just about how gay people relate to each other, but, but, but ordinary couples as well. Sometimes you're there, but you're not there, you know? So I want also to challenge that perception that um, uh, we're so, uh, this internet thing uh, has made all of us closer, but at the same time has, made, has separated us, also mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. It's so scary that you know um, uh, information is in the internet are easy to to, to, get. to get. You know, there are no uh, identifications for kids. You know, when when I'm doing my research during uh, the film, uh, when the youth of the generation of today's generation are far more different than my generation, you know, I can easily get internet connection, research on something, and it's there. Um, Instructional videos are everywhere. In YouTube, you can get how to use a gun, mm. to be exact. How to use a gun, how to where commit to suicide, where to buy it. You know, it's easy. It's it makes, okay. you know, internet should be um, a platform that you can uh, make your life easier, but not too much. There should be a fine line within what you see and what you can see. Mm. You want that? <laughs> anyway, that's a different thing, though. But, but yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that you could very clearly see this thing of being part of something and not being part yeah. of it because of media in the very last scene when the guy kills himself. Yeah. Because 
th his friend can see it. He is sort of part yeah, of it, but yeah. at the same time, he cannot do anything, do anything because about he is not there. He's yeah, not exactly, present. Exactly. And that is because of the media, because of the cameras and the screens. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. And yeah. And the other thing is, I thought you also had that when he was posting all the things on Facebook. People participate in your life, yes. but at the same time, they're not part of your life. They're really. not part of your life. You know, I before this, before coming to Berlin, I made an experiment. I posted something on Facebook and said, um, "It's it's so great." You know, um, my, my, my television series is premiering and my film is, is having world premiere in Berlinale. And, but when I was a kid, we didn't have television. I had to go to somebody else's house to watch TV. And people liked it because it's drama. Mm -hmm. See? But it was an experiment. Mm -hmm. We want that. And sometimes we manipulate. We manipulate it to get reactions from people. Mm -hmm. So. And is that also where you got the idea from for, for, the, for, for your own usage of Facebook and the internet? Two years ago, there was this incident in the Philippines where a 13-year-old kid killed his 17-year-old boyfriend mm -hmm. inside a mall in the squad. In, uh, it was videoed by some okay. yes. and, and uploaded, uploaded in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that sparked my, my, my interest, my, my idea. All right. Well, it sounds very, very heavy. Exactly. That's why I did not use the same scene. I could yeah. have, but as a filmmaker, you you get inspiration and elevate it into something. Mm -hmm. You say and to, to say something about it. And how did you get involved into the movie? Like you had the idea, and then you asked him because you know each other, or was there like a casting? Or uh, there was a casting. <laughs> uh, we had the script, and then we, he was supposed to play the other guy. But then the the, the, uh, the other actor didn't show up during the reading, so I dropped him and said, oh, can you do it? Maybe you can do it. So that's it. Okay. I never knew him before. before okay. the and one last thing about um, the, the scenes in the movie, that uh, when the beginning and the end, those very I, uh, artistic scenes yes. on the roof, um, in the end I wondered how to understand this that because it was very beautiful, very soft in a way, and it was a harsh contrast to the scene before where, where he kills yeah, himself. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could see some, I don't know, peace after death in that, or if it was just a contrast to show how it could be. Or I always believe that death is the final escape. I always believe in that. So, as a filmmaker, that's my take on it. And, and, uh, we, as individuals, at some point, we are defined by this. So at some point in his life, David is defined by his love for the other person. So that's it. But, and I also believe that one should have the freedom when to, chew, uh, when to end his life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a positive thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. For some reasons, I believe in that. Mm -hmm. Um, when you feel like it's enough for me, then go on, choose it. Mm -hmm. uh, I say, um, you can write your own life, you can have your own ending. Mm -hmm. Which I guess in a Catholic context is also very <laughs> controversial. I mean, yes, yes. in that context it says God has given you the life and yeah. he's the only one who's allowed to take it away from you and you rather say no, it's your own choice. Yes. So. We make a lot of choices in our life. Mm -hmm. So why not make your final choice? Mm -hmm. If you have that thought. I mean, that's why when, when, when you see someone, when I, I hear that someone dies, I say, okay, fine. I don't go on. It's, it's okay. It's, it's a part of the, it's a part of the journey. I believe that I don't know. It's 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 corny maybe, but life is a journey. So. Mm. Well, what I just think is that the movie has a lot of potential to spark a lot of discussions. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and yeah. we would love that. We would love to have that. Mm -hmm. So that is sort of also what you expect from the screening in the Philippines in two weeks. And how is that going to happen? Are you going to have the discussions in cinema or do you hope it's also going to be outside, like outside on television? Yes, yes, yes. Because I also, well, aside from the, the social media thing, I also want to, to have conversations about uh, mental health mm -hmm. and choices in life. I know that my film is very challenging to, wa to watch. I mean, my, my artistic choices were, were challenging. The shaky camera thing, focus, defocus, sound. but. But uh, I want people to go through that experience. State of mind. State of mind. Actually, it's a, it's a state of mind that that person is going through. Mm -hmm. So I want that. 
how, how do we say it? When, when you're going through that depression, you know, it's so hard to focus on something. Mm -hmm. And I want that. I want people to see that. It's not easy. Just don't say you pray. Just don't say you have a vacation to go somewhere. It's difficult. If you need help, then go for help. Well, I wish you all the best with the movie and I hope that it sparks all the discussions. Thank you. And Thank you. Um, I wish you a very, very good screening in two weeks in the Philippines. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Thank for the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much.